I boast for him today to tell you about Jesus and Paul said in this in the book of Romans. Well, yeah, it's he said, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. There it is the right of God to be from faith to faith, and it is written, the just shall live by faith. The wrath of God, the wrath of God, and the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all unrighteousness and unrighteousness of men, all the truth and unrighteousness. The Bible says that we know there is a God. The Bible says that there is a God. And that we suppress the truth in unrighteousness, that we know there's a God. But yet we choose to do that which is wrong. We choose to do that which is wrong. We choose to go against what God says. And therefore God says the wrath of God is revealed against all unrighteousness of men. And the question is, how do we get right with God? The answer cannot be human effort. If we try by our human effort, we cannot get right with God. No matter how much we try, we cannot get right with God. The only way to get right with God is Jesus Christ. He is the righteousness of God. He is God. Thank you very much. Thank you. He is the righteousness of God. Christ is the righteousness of God. And because he's the righteousness of God, he, he lived a perfect life. He did no wrong and he lived a perfect life. Now why did he live a perfect life? He had to be a perfect sacrifice. It says, John the Baptist says, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. You see, Christ took away your sin, the things that you did wrong. Christ died in your place. And he died to reconcile you to him. You see, this world has gone off beam. It's gone away from God. And, and, it's, and it doesn't know where it's going, you see. And, Man can try and patch things up with politics and philosophy and with science, but there's something seriously wrong with society. Jesus puts his finger on it and says it's the heart of man, that the heart of man has to be born again. Jesus said in John chapter 3, he said, you must be born again. Now Nicodemus was quite a learned Pharisee. He knew a lot of his scripture, but yet Jesus said to him, you must be born again. Now why did he say that? He said it so that your heart could be changed by God. So that you could have a relationship with God. That you could love God and adore Him and worship Him and praise Him and honor Him. All because of the blood of Jesus. All because of what He did for you on that cross. That is what it's called to be born again. But to be born again you have to repent. You have to repent and acknowledge your sin. Acknowledge the things that are wrong in your life. You have to do that. If you refuse to do that, then the Bible says, all fall short of the glory of God. These are so important things, my friend. If you were to die tonight, where would you go? You need to know where you stand with God. You need to know that you're right with God. You need to be right with Him. And the only way to be right with God, the only way to stand before God is Jesus Christ. He was the lamb that was prepared for you. He was the sacrifice that was prepared for you. He was the one that gave his life for you. He was the one that shed his blood for you. And if you want to be reconciled to God, you go to Jesus. He was perfect. He never lied. He never did anything wrong. And he died on your behalf to reconcile you, to bring you home. But you've got to believe in him. You've got to trust in him and have faith in him. You've got to do that. You've got to cry out to him and say, Lord, I don't want to live like this. I want to find mercy. I want to find you, Lord. I want to be forgiven. I want to be right with you. I want to be restored. And you have to believe in Jesus who died and rose again. And if you believe in him, you get saved. You get born again. 
But if you reject him, there is no hope. Jesus mentions hell more than heaven. He said, there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There is a judgment to come. And no matter how much scholarship you have, no matter how many PhDs you have, no matter how much you study at Manchester or any university, your intellectual power, your intellectual studies cannot save you. The only thing that can save you is this death and resurrection of Jesus because he was who he claimed to be. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. He said, I give my life a ransom for many. And he gave his life as a ransom for you on your behalf. Now you might say, well, it never happened, yeah, it was a myth. But if you're gonna say it was a myth, you gotta present your evidence to show me why it was a myth. And I'll present to you evidence and show you why it wasn't a myth. There are evidences that I can give you if you want those evidences. But you have to be open to that evidence. You have to be open to it. It's no good closing your mind and saying, oh, he's a street preacher, he's preaching his head off. Oh, I'll ignore him. No, you've got to ask yourself, are you right with God? Are you ready to meet God? Do you know how to get saved? Do you know how to know the Lord today? You get to know him by having faith in him, by believing in his words, by believing that he died for you. Says this. He says, I am the light of the world. I am the bread of heaven. And he's the one that can feed your soul. He's the one that can fill you with joy. He's the one that can fill you with peace. He's the one that can fill you with hope. Jesus Christ, my friend, can save you. He's the one that can save you. He's the one that can give you hope. Jesus Christ. So the question is, what are you going to do with him? What do you think of Jesus? Was he a prophet? Who was he? Why did he exist? You know, the Bible says this, do not lie. Have you ever lied? Do not steal. Have you ever stolen? Don't commit adultery. Have you ever committed adultery? Honor your father and mother. Honor the Sabbath day. Don't have any other gods before you. Don't make any other idols. Have you broken these commandments? We've all broken those commandments. We've all broken them. Don't lie, don't steal, don't commit adultery. We've all broken those commandments. And that means we can become guilty before God. And when we become guilty, how do we get rid of that guilt? We could try and go to a counselor. We could try and take pills. We could try all those things. But ultimately, the way to get rid of our guilt is to know that Jesus Christ died on that cross. That's how you get rid of your guilt. That he died on that cross on your behalf. That he gave his life for you on that cross. That's why he died on that cross. He died on that cross to reconcile you to him. He died on that cross as your substitute, as your sacrifice. That's why he died on that cross. And, and if you don't accept that, if you don't believe that, sorry. Oops. If you don't believe that, then you're rejecting what God has offered you. God has offered you salvation. He's offered you hope. He's offered you mercy. He's offered you His grace. He's offered you His love. He says in His word, come to me, all you who are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And He wants to give you rest. If you're worried about your finances, worried about your studies, Jesus can give you rest. He can give you peace of mind. He can help you to know why you're here, why you're studying, why you're doing this. It's because there is a God and He created you to make you, to, for you to love Him and to love your neighbor as yourself. There is a meaning and a purpose to your life. There is a plan to your life. And the answer is, are you going to come into that plan and into that purpose by knowing your Redeemer, by knowing Him who came to die on your behalf? He gave you a hope. He gave you a future. He gave you a purpose. But you have to believe in Him. You have to turn to him and say, you know what, Lord, I believe you died for me. I believe that you shed your blood for me. And you know what, Lord, I'm sorry for the sin. I'm sorry for getting drunk at the weekend. I'm sorry for sleeping around. I'm sorry for looking at Paul. Lord, I'm sorry for these things. Forgive me. And you cry out to him and you say, Lord, forgive me. Have mercy upon me. And if you say that, if you cry out to him and say, Lord, have mercy upon me, he will not kick you in the teeth. He'll say, I forgive you. I cleanse you. I wash you. I'll show you my love. I'll show you my grace. And he'll show you his grace. 
He'll show you His mercy. He'll show you His love. He'll show you, you. He'll bring forgiveness and kindness and tenderness to your life. He'll wash you clean and He'll forgive you. But if you reject it, you're rejecting God. If you reject it, you're rejecting the message of God. You're rejecting the message that God has given you. You're rejecting the message that God has provided for you. The message of hope. The message of salvation. My friends, don't run all the way to hell with a PhD. Don't run all the way to hell with a BA. You might get a first in your BA, but if you don't know Jesus, then you're on the way to hell. You're on the way because you don't know the Lord who made you. He who made you is calling you to trust Him. He who made you is calling you to believe in Him. He who made you is calling you to trust Him and to look to Him and to believe in Him. Not to believe in the goddess of the God of scholarship. Not to believe in the God of money or the God of sex or the God of power or the God of faith. But to believe in the God of glory, the God who created you. To believe in the God who created you, who made you, who wants a relationship with you. Who wants to call you into his kingdom and to give you hope for the future and a life. That opportunity is there for you. But you have to call upon the name of the Lord and thou shalt be saved. If you call upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. If you cry out to God, you will be saved. But if you climb to heaven on the intellect without God, there is no hope. If you climb on the ladder of emotion, there is no hope. You have to climb on the ladder of Jesus. You have to get up on His back and let Him carry you to heaven. Because He's the one that died and rose again. And He's the future. He is the future. So my friends, you can have all the scholarship you want. And you can do all the things in your life and say, you know, Jay, I ignore it. I don't want it. But the gospel is the power of salvation. And if you ignore that message, my friend, there is only judgment. There is only a judgment to come. There is only judgment for those who reject that message. But if you cry out to God and say, you know what, I need you, God. I need your mercy. I need your grace. I need your forgiveness. Don't be arrogant. Don't be proud. Don't be arrogant of your intellect or proud of your knowledge or proud of your status or proud of who you are in the sense of rejecting God. That is not a good place to be. But if you come to God with a humility, if you come to God with humbleness and you cry out to God, then you can know His forgiveness, you can know His love, you can know His joy, you can know His peace if you cry out to God. You can find peace and hope and love in Jesus. Hey, I'm okay. I'm okay. It's good to see you. Right? Yeah, I'm good. How are you doing? I'm okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm filming now. Just, just good. If you want to. I don't mind. Are you alright? Yeah, man. Not good. It is. It is. What are you studying here? Um, no, I'm just calling like Norman Dewey, but I'm taking my own. Oh. You're not finding sexual violence. I don't know. I don't know. Hey, it's great to see you. Are you a girlfriend? I'm a girlfriend. Take care. God bless you. Anyway. There is the love of God, there is a joy of God, there is a peace of God, there is a mercy of God, there is the love of God, there is the kindness of God. And for you, my friend, all the kindness of God for you that you can have today, if you love to Him, if you trust in Him, if you believe in Him today. All the joy, the peace, the hope, the forgiveness that you can have today. Oh, the magnificent love of God. Oh, the grace of God that Christ would come and die on a cross for you. Oh, that Christ died for you on that cross. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, the Prince of Glory died for you. The Prince of Glory gave his life for you with the crown of thorns on his head and dying in your place to bring you home to heaven. Oh, my friend, what mercy, what love, what kindness, what tenderness. Oh, how beautiful he is that he would die for you on that cross. And he commands you and he says to you, repent. And he draws you to him with cords of love. He says to you today, don't go the way of trouble. Don't go the way of pride. Don't go the way of materialism. Don't go the way of getting drunk. Don't go the way of sleeping around. But come to me who died on a cross for you. Come to me who gave my life for you. Come to me who died on a cross. Come to me who shed his blood for you. Come to me. Oh, come to me if you're weary. Come to me if you're sad. Come to me if you're burdened. Come to me. 
and you can go to him and find that he's merciful, find that he's kind, find that he's tender, find that he's loving as you go to Jesus. As you knock on the door of heaven to Jesus, he will let you in. If you cry to him, he will let you in. For he's a beautiful Savior, a lovely Savior, and he wants to save you today. But you have to cry out to him. Oh, my friends, you are here for a reason. Don't feel suicidal. Don't feel depressed. Don't feel down today. There is a Savior who you can know today. A Savior that can show you a way forward. A Savior that can help you. He is beautiful. He is glorious. He is wonderful. He said so many amazing parables. The prodigal son, he said, I'll, I'll have all that I want. And he went off and spent everything. And then one day you realize the mess he was in and he goes to his father. And his father doesn't pass him. His father runs to him and puts his arms around him and hugs him. And that is what God will do to you. As you cry out to him, he will hug you, he will comfort you, he will forgive you. But my friends, you have to do that yourself. You have to come to him. Oh, come to him, my friends. Come to him and find his love. Come to him and find his mercy. He is so kind. He is so tender. He is so loving. He is so gracious. Oh, cry out to him and say, Lord, I need you. Lord, help me to get through my studies. Help me to get through this and he'll help you. He'll call upon him and he'll forgive you. Call upon him and he will help you. Call upon him and he shall restore you. Call upon him and he will bless you. Call upon him while you can. He said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I long to gather you as the chicks, as the head gathers her chicks. Oh, he longs that you would come to him. He longs that you would wake up. He longs that you would see that this is not fully life. That there is more to life than what you see. There is more to life than you're experiencing. There is more to it than this. There's greater joy than you've ever known. There is greater blessing than you've ever known. There is more to it than you could ever, ever understand. My friend, don't miss it. Don't miss this joy. Don't miss this blessings. Don't miss this salvation. Don't miss this glorious, wonderful salvation in Jesus. Don't miss it, my friend. Oh, what a message for you today. A message so blessed, so glorious, that he came and died on that cross 2,000 years ago. And he died as a murderer, but do not murder. He died as a thief, but never thief. He died as a liar, but he never lied. He died on that cross to bring you home. You've got to cry out to him and repent. You've got to say, you know what? I did do that wrong thing. You know what? I am in unbelief. You know what? I have done wrong. And you have to cry out to him and say, Lord, forgive me. And if you cry out to him, I guarantee he will forgive you. He will cleanse you. He will wash you. You will be a child of God, knowing who you are, that you're forgiven, restored, and redeemed, that you can know his peace today. I listened to a testimony today of a lady who was a landlord of a pub, and she used to get drunk, she used to get drunk, and all sorts of things when she was a landlady. One day, one day, she was in hospital. One day, she was in hospital. And a lady spoke to her about being born again. And that landlady became born again. She became a child of God. And she now is testifying to the grace of God in her life. You do that today. You testify to the grace of God. Will you tell people about the grace of God? About the mercy of God and the love of God? How that He can forgive you? How that He can restore you? how that he can bring you hope and blessing and joy. His name is Jesus and can give you blessing and hope as you trust in him and as you love to him. Oh, he's a beautiful savior and he's here for you today. Cry out to him. Say, Lord, I'm knocking on your door. Lord, I need you. Lord, forgive me. Lord, cleanse me. Lord, restore me. And my friend, he'll cleanse you. He will restore you and he will bless you. 
and it'll be a good life. It'll be the best life. It'll be a glorious life. It'll be a life in the Spirit of God. It'll be a life in the power of God. It'll be a life in the Spirit of God. A life of joy, a life of peace, a life of power. It'll be a life of the soul of man in the soul of God. It'll be beautiful, glorious, because you become born again of God. Born again of the Holy Spirit. Born again of the Holy Spirit. Knowing real joy, real peace, real power in your life. There's no power in sex outside of marriage. There's no power in drugs. There's no power in scholarship. There's no power in drink. Just like the wind nearly blew my hat off. That is the wind of the Holy Spirit and He blows wherever He wishes. And the Holy Spirit could come into your life. Let the Holy Spirit come into your life. Let Him come in. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Let the Holy Spirit come and dwell in your heart. Let the Holy Spirit come and be in your life. Let the Holy Spirit change you. Let the Holy Spirit open your eyes. Let the Holy Spirit teach you. Let the Holy Spirit show you the things in the Scripture. Show you truths great about Jesus. There are great truths about Him. That He is the Son of God. Many people say, where did Jesus say that He was the Son of God? Where does He say that Jesus was God? Many people say that. Where does He say Jesus was God? Matthew 28. Go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. These three, uh, you know, go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is a direct quote from Jesus who claims that He is God in the Bible. So there, my friends, the truth is there for you. But you've got to be willing to accept the truth. He says, go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He is the God of the Bible. He is the God of the Bible. And the God of the Bible can restore you today. There is a meaning and a purpose to your life. There is a plan to your life, a purpose to your life. And God wants the best for you. God wants a plan for you. He wants the hope for you, the future for you. But you have to believe in Him. You have to trust in Him. And if you trust in Him, you will be saved. Call upon Him today. Cry out to Him today. Cry out to Him. And he will save you. Cry out to Him, and He will give you hope and a future. Cry out to Him, and He will bless you. Cry out to Him, and He will show you mercy. He will show you love. He will show you grace. Cry out to Him, my friend. Cry out to Him. And I tell you this, He will not push you away. He will not turn you away. There is a God that you can cry out to. There is a God that you can pray to. There is a God that you can know. And He's called Jesus Christ. And if you cry out to Him, He will save you. He will give you a hope and a future. Because He died and He rose again. So cry out to Him while you can. Cry out to Him. And He will give you hope. Cry out to Him and He will answer your prayer. Cry out to Him and He will forgive you. He will forgive you. As you look to Him, He will save you. But you've got to cry out to Him. You've got to believe in Him. And trust in Him as your Lord and Savior. So turn to Him today. Jesus Christ can save you. He can give you a future. He can give you a plan. He can give you a purpose. But you have to cry out to Him. You have to cry out to Him. And when you do that, He will save you. Power in the blood of Jesus to save you. There's power in the blood of Jesus to give you hope and a future. Power in the blood of Jesus to redeem you. There's power in that blood. That blood was the blood of the Son of God. That blood was the blood of the Son of God. The Son of God shed His blood for you. The Son of God gave His life for you. The Son of God gave His all for you on that cross. He could not have done enough for you. He couldn't have done enough for you. He laid down His life that you may have life. He gave His life. Hi folks, this is Jay when I just Manchester University. There. And then over there, there's loads of them over there. It's preaching over there but I got kicked off campus down there, so
So anyhow, so I met one lady who I've preached in town and uh, it was good to meet her, so it's been good. So I'm just going to give out leaflets now. And, uh, so.